Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Andre Morrow in our LPB studios in Baton Rouge for our continuing special coverage celebrating the life of Louisiana's 54th governor, Kathleen Babino Blanco. Our coverage began this morning with the interfaith services for Governor Blanco, and now the procession moves on to the 34-story state capitol in Baton Rouge, where Governor Blanco will lie in state for public visitation until 6 o'clock this evening. The front steps of the Capitol is where on January 12, 2004, Blanco became the only woman so far to give the oath of office as governor of Louisiana and then serve as governor. You see live pictures from outside the Capitol now as the hearse carrying the body of Governor Blanco to the front of the Capitol steps. There will be salutes and ceremony. With me is LPB President Beth Courtney and uh, an historic day for Louisiana, Beth. It, it is indeed, Andre. And as we see the hearse pulling up, uh, we're she, Kathleen's body is going to be met, it, met by, um, I think, uh, her family that's going to, and we're going to have an escorting up the steps of this new state capitol, as we call it, mm -hmm. the capitol that Huey Long built. Uh, it uh, is a, certainly, as you say, an historic occasion. I think that, uh, the body will be there in the Memorial Hall. We sometimes refer to things as the Rotunda, but that would be like the nation's capital. If there were something like <laughs> that, yeah. Right, but this is Memorial Hall, and you see uh, many of the people who were there for the service earlier this morning. It's a hot day in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. No rain so far. No rain, we're happy about that. And there will be a volley uh, salute, not a 21-gun salute, but a firing celebratory and commemorative salute by the National Guard, the Louisiana National Guard Military Funeral Honor Team. And uh, the pallbearers who will be accompanying the body will be the Louisiana State, State Police. Police Honor Guard. Mm -hmm. and and, the, yeah. yeah, First Lady Donna Edwards uh, and the family will greet uh, the body as it is moved into the Capitol. Uh, for, once again, public visitation from uh, 1 o'clock until 6 p.m. this evening. There has been so much celebration here. I remember covering the inauguration of Kathleen Babineau Blanco when she became the first woman governor of the state of Louisiana. And it was a day of great celebration. There were children everywhere because she had a children's uh, event going on at the same time. And there were people covering all of the grounds of the Capitol. You know, this building has had such interesting things occur. Of course, we've had in this building the assassination yep. of Governor Huey Long, who he built the building, but he was not, did not preside there as governor. No, correct. He was at the old state capitol. Built capital. in record time. Right, <laughs> According to today's uh, standards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see the Louisiana National Guard in lockstep holding the casket draped in the American flag, which will carry the body of Governor Blanco up the steps of the Louisiana State Capitol. And bagpipes now. So many people have been involved with the planning of all of these days' activities, the three days celebrating the life of Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco. Uh, certainly the current governor his office has been involved, but many people who served with her in her administration have been involved in the planning of this. Governor John Bell Edwards, the featured perhaps speaker from this morning's Interfaith Services at St. Joseph Cathedral. We will hear uh, what he had to say once again, replay that for you shortly uh, as we watch the services here. Family, colleagues, friends, outside the state capitol and lining the entrance way.
the clang of taps and the procession continues. See people wiping their foreheads, it's hot outside of course, and also wiping tears from their faces. Andre, at one point in time, I think all of state government was in that building. Now it's certainly overseen by the Louisiana legislature, and the president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House had to agree to have Governor Blanco's body there uh, in repose in front of the Senate doors where it will be, uh, and they readily uh, accepted that responsibility and uh, are participating in this ceremony. Now inside also in this area of the front of the state capitol uh, there will be memorabilia from her career as governor, lieutenant governor, family, served as public service commissioner. And of course state legislature. State legislature. Mm -hmm. Every office she ran for, she was victorious. Yeah. Well, at one point, she was thinking of running for governor earlier, and she pulled out. And did not run. She, and did not run, yes. I think we're looking down from the second floor, uh, balcony sort of overlooking this memorial hall. And this of course is where her body will lie in state until six o'clock this evening. And this is the first of three days of ceremonies for Governor Blanco. It moves on to Lafayette tomorrow and on Saturday. And burial is in Lafayette Saturday afternoon. That's a private family burial. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's Coach, my husband, it is. Mm -hmm. walking uh, up to the casket there. 55 years of marriage. Um, yes, they were very close. Very They're inseparable, close. right? Inseparable. He was her biggest cheerleader. Yeah, he was. He was. Um, and he will certainly be given and need the support of their large family. And, uh, and friends. She's survived by her mother. I know, a hundred years yes, old. Yes, amazing. Yes. And five of their children and most of her brothers and sisters she survived by. I remember Raymond Blanco saying to me early on in her career, showing me all kinds of uh, surveys that they'd taken and telling me how strong a candidate she was going to be. He was always, he was always thinking. 
They, uh, they had a joyous family life together. Yeah, in the, in the you early... You had to yeah. have a good time. <laughs> yeah, they did, they did. Being in their home, it was, uh, it was a, a really a good time. Um, they had a consulting firm, Koto Consulting, mm -hmm. uh, in the early days before she got into politics. And she transitioned from uh, working as a at-home mom, which was a huge job with her six children, uh, to serving the people of Louisiana in the you know, I was always amazed. She had six children, and she was a school teacher briefly. And uh, her first really public job after Ben, her youngest child, um, uh, went to school, and uh, she was in a census taker. <laughs> she was doing that. She was doing in, involved in the census, and uh, of course ran for the Louisiana legislature from Lafayette. And was elected, and, uh, and didn't she early on campaign with with Ben there at her side? Oh yes. On doors? Mm -hmm. I think her whole family yeah. was always involved in everything. One of the things that I was thinking about today is everybody kept making reference to the fact that she was a, was a mother, a mother's love. That was one of the reflections that Kim Hunter Reed shared. She said uh, she was nurturing, never ending attention uh, to her children, grandchildren, those who worked for her, and also for all the people of Louisiana. Of course, you see an array of flowers there at the state capitol. The family is asking, though, um, moving forward in lieu of flowers for donations to be given to the Kathleen Babineau Blanco Policy Center, uh, which is the final space is to be soon built at UL Lafayette, but the, her papers are there, and that place is operational now and just really up and running, it will be her legacy. It will be where mm -hmm. people go to know her and know how she governed. Andre, one of the things that I think that LPB has tried to do through the ever since we've signed on in 1975 is to make sure that we have a record of all of the inaugurations, the debates, the um, historic events, and they are available up online. Uh, and we are sharing, we shared a lot of this video uh, with the people preparing for yes. today mm -hmm. and also will be uh, shared at that center as well. Uh, teachers can use some of this material to see um, in this new age of technology, you can see the speeches given by our leaders, our state leaders. Yeah, I guess classrooms in Louisiana right now could be uh, watching uh, this history unfold right before their eyes uh, with our live uh, broadcast. One of the things I remember about Governor Blanco was that when we were preparing a Louisiana history series and a book that goes along with it, she was so supportive, having been a teacher herself, as is Donna Edwards, our current first lady. Uh, first lady um, she knew how important it was to have materials like this, and uh, there's Donna Edwards with Governor Edwards. Governor Edwards yes. um, so Kathleen said, let me make sure that this book will be the official gift for the state of Louisiana when we were celebrating the bicentennial of the Louisiana Purchase, and that was in 2003. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, the governor's fam uh, Governor Blanco's family uh, will be here receiving guests um, for a small part of the early afternoon, uh, then they will retire to the governor's mansion, and then they will return this evening when public visitation winds to a close in Baton Rouge, as we see Coach and one of her daughters looking down upon the body of Governor Blanco. They will return from the governor's mansion, though, uh, and receive the flag, which uh, earlier at St. Joseph Cathedral, a state flag draped her coffin now the U.S. flag, the family will receive that flag, and then at that point, the proceedings will move on to Lafayette. Mm. It was remarkable how resilient um, Kathleen was in her last days. 
and what good spirit she had. I think it is, she, was, she is truly, she was truly a woman of faith. And um, she tried to certainly give comfort to those around her, but she also uh, was a person of such, she had great good humor and really joy in her life. You know, she really, with her illness as it progressed, and then she admittedly said, I feel great today, I'm having some great days. Right. This was many months ago and up until about a year ago uh, when we visited with her at her home. And uh, she prepared her family and the people of Louisiana by talking about it, by being very open about her illness and saying that she knew that she would meet um, more difficult times down the road. I noticed many of the family members wearing blue. We always were talking about uh, Governor Blanco, they talked about blue was her color. Mm -hmm. You can see this in the pictures, <laughs> as well as being called the Queen Bee, and people would, were wearing jewelry. Uh, and we heard that this morning. <laughs> we you did. Re reiterate that for us. Well, at, at, at one point, um, she had, was a strong woman, as we discussed earlier, and she uh, uh, had somebody going against her in the legislature, and she had them dismissed from the committee. <laughs> and he referred to her as, what does she think she is, a queen, queen bee? bee. <laughs> and she embraced that phrase yes. and, and started wearing a bee pin. And a lot of her staff w would be doing that as well. Another interesting thing is they named a big computer at, uh, par as part of the uh, Louisiana Optical Network, LANI, which connects all the big computers around the state at higher education institutions. They named the biggest computer at the time, the Queen Bee. The Queen Bee. In her honor. <laughs> Well, she did certainly have the art of persuasion, and, and she knew that, right? She did, she did. With dignity and style and grace and love, as her family again continues to look upon her. And Governor Edwards had some uh, really touchy words this morning at St. Joseph Cathedral um, as he spoke, in fact, broke up at one point, um, almost in tears, as he talked about Governor Blanco. She just recently, in the past, about two months ago, I uh, gave her endorsement to, for Governor John Bell Edwards um, as really one of her last public mm -hmm. um, displays. That was in Lafayette. But I think certainly this has not at all been a partisan celebration. No, it's been one of, no. of um, people who've known her through the years and people who admired her from afar. <laughs> as we all said, that everybody who met her thought that she had a personal connection with you because she yeah. had that ability to make you feel very special. And she was never haughty or distant or anything. Um, I think she was a, a very genuine person, as you would say. Yeah. Great, greatest compliment. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we uh, listen in on uh, Governor John Bell Edwards from the services, take you back to the services this morning at St. Joseph Cathedral, if we have that, and uh, listen to uh, what the governor had to say as he uh, gave his eulogy for Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco. Distinguished guests, former Governor Jindal, most especially Mrs. Babineau, coach, the entire Blanco family. Thank you for the honor of being able to celebrate and pay tribute to a great woman. Someone I was fortunate enough to know, to know well, to call a mentor and a friend. Two years before my election as governor in 2015, and long before many thought I could win, Governor Blanco invited our family to Lafayette to have supper so that my kids would hear from her children what to expect from life in the governor's mansion. And I don't share this with you to highlight the election or her clairvoyance. Rather, I share it with you to highlight her generous spirit. She personally spent time with each of our children. And Coach made a significant contribution too. He turned me on to a really good old fashioned that night. <laughs> that night she also spoke to me about the need to focus on the least fortunate and the most vulnerable in Louisiana. 
And we had the gospel reading from Matthew 25 just a moment ago. She didn't cite that passage, but I knew from the end of that conversation that that passage had greatly influenced her because she spoke about those people. She spoke about the least among us. Lord, when did I see you hungry, thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, or in prison? And this deep and abiding love that she had for all of the people made her a special leader, authentic, consistent, and sincere. We all know that Kathleen Babineau Blanco was the first woman to hold the office of governor of Louisiana, and she certainly will not be the last. Kathleen's faith, life experiences, and genuine concern for others allowed her to connect on a deeply personal level with nearly every person she met. And I suspect that every person here believes that Kathleen knew them and loved them individually. And you are all right, she did. She was a true Cajun, born in Iberia Parish. She was a mother who knew the great joy of raising six children. But at the same time, she was also a mother who knew the unimaginable heartbreak of losing a child. A devout Catholic, she leaned on her faith for guidance and for comfort. Like all of us, I suspect, she was the sum of her cumulative experiences, but she was also much more. She was a stay-at-home mom, a teacher, a public service commissioner, a lieutenant governor, and yes, she was the 54th governor of the great state of Louisiana. And she was a good and decent person who understood people because she understood life, its beauty and its hardships. And as we all know, she led Louisiana through some of its darkest days. And as a believer in divine providence, she would tell you that she knew she was put in that position for a reason. And I believe that. I also believe that she was meant to be governor of this great state for many other reasons. There was one group who needed her passionate and compassionate leadership more than any other, Louisiana's children. Some might say that being a teacher or being a mother is what sparked her love of children. Certainly that is the case. But I know that her devotion to the well-being of the children of Louisiana ran much deeper. She saw every child as a child of God, as a brother, or sister in Christ. And accordingly, she felt the responsibility to care for them, each of them, as if they were her own. And I think it's fitting that just before I got up to speak, the children's choir performed this little light of mine, because that is what she wanted for every child, for their light to shine into a brighter future, a future where the quality of their education did not depend upon the zip code that they lived in. A future where no parent needed to wonder how to pay for their child's doctor's visit. A future where a child, even from the most modest of means and the most challenging of circumstances, can grow up in a world filled with opportunity, including the opportunity to be governor. On July 2nd, Don and I attended a ceremony in Lafayette to name a section of U.S. Highway 90, the Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco Highway. It was certainly a fitting tribute, and it was a festive occasion. And she and Coach were so excited about that event. And a couple of weeks ago, I returned to Lafayette to see her at St. Joseph Hospice, and things were much different. But as soon as I approached her, she opened her eyes, looked right at me, and asked me if I had another highway to name for her. <laughs> Governor John Bell Edwards, the words, uh, some of the words 
He spoke this morning at St. Joseph Cathedral as we look at live pictures from Louisiana's state capitol uh, as Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco, the body is lying in state at the state capitol. There in Memorial Hall, it's on the Senate, Senate side, right before the doors opening into the Louisiana Senate. You can see all of the people who have been involved with helping make this event be a very special one. And right now we're watching as Governor John Bell Edwards and his wife Donna Edwards are closest to viewing Governor Blanco. There at the left of your screen. As we mentioned, Beth, this is uh, the first of three days of ceremony mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. Governor uh, Blanco. And um, I think she would be uh, happy with the way things are going so far, huh? Well, I think so. <laughs> when I was talking with her daughter, Monique, uh, several weeks ago, we were discussing uh, how we might uh, assist in this uh, event. She said that her mother was still organizing it. Yeah. <laughs> and she was really, she was fading quickly, but she was, as the governor talked about, she, at the very end, she, would, she opened up her eyes yes. and was very, <laughs> talked to him. Uh, and uh, Another highway. <laughs> another highway. Yes, uh, a wo woman of great joy and comfort. You know, I, I, I certainly think when we asked her during the campaign, when she was running for governor, about the most, the turning point in her life, or one that was a very memorable moment. Uh, she, of course, referred to the death of her youngest child, Ben. And yeah. um, it was so sincere. People are used to hearing, I think, sort of repetitive uh, comments from politicians. And one of the things Kathleen did was she was a very genuine lady. You knew that, too. You could <laughs> right. feel it and yeah. sense it um, because you knew how genuine she right. was. But she would be the first one to say she's not perfect. Not perfect and uh, none and of tough. us, none, none of us <laughs> in, in this life are perfect. And she made mistakes and things she wished she could have done better. But I, you, you look at her legacy, and I think it will be one that we indeed need to study. Uh, she was faced with uh, two terrific, horrific um, hurricanes, Katrina and Rita, and. Um, she did not want those to be the defining moment in her life. And I think uh, she has been talking about her great faith and her, her love for Louisiana and the people of Louisiana. And uh, I know that she wishes that would be her legacy. And I think that, uh, especially from the words we heard this morning and that we've heard um, since her death, um, and in this final year of her life, as a matter of fact, that uh, it's the people of Louisiana that she has always put first. And if there was a portion of those that came bef first, it would be the children. Uh, yes, indeed. And so there will be viewing at the state capitol today la, uh, until, six until six this evening. Until yes. six. And, and then it moves from Baton Rouge to Lafayette tomorrow on Friday at Cathedral Hall at St. John the Evangelist Cathedral, public visitation from noon until 8 p.m. And then on Saturday, once again, the public visitation continues from 8 until 10.30 a.m. there at Cathedral Hall at St. John the Evangelist. And uh, then a massive Christian burial followed by private burial and her family's uh, final moments um, with her. And we will be streaming that online at lpb.org. So if uh, people are not able to go to any of those events. Right, you can uh, join us at lpb.org. We'll have all of those events streaming live for you um, all day Saturday, uh, mm -hmm. as long as they last, and we'll have that for you. We thank you so much, Beth. Thank you for being uh, oh, here today for this. Oh, it has been my privilege. Yeah, you, it, watching you. Louisiana history in action. For Beth Courtney, I'm Andre Morrow. Thank you so much for being here with us as we continue our coverage and uh, say so long to Governor Kathleen Babineau-Blanco. Thank you.